We keep quiet about it. So we want to have a public that is aware that when we say rape, they know what rape is, what rape entails, and how to, you know, we make it something that is seen as a violation of human rights. Which rape is really? It's a violation of human rights. So we want the public to be aware, to call it as a crime. Oh, we are, he raped a child. He's a rapist. All right? Not our relatives, not our friends. We want people to call it as it is. So it is very important for us to be able to inform them, to inform and to share. Obviously, targeting a high focus on counties which have high prevalence of, of rape and defilement. Our primary target is the judiciary. Our campaign secondary target will be the police, prosecutors, local administration, religious leaders, as well as cultural leaders. These are people who inform as well as shape the narrative that the public undertake. Who are the key stakeholders in this? The key stakeholders are all of us. But importantly, civil society organizations working on SGBV, religious and interreligious organizations, donor communities and development partners. We are hoping to look at media personalities, KEPSA, eminent personality campaign ambassadors. These are people we are hoping that will take up this mission that we have and run with it. Community members, physician for human rights, witness protection agencies, Ministry of Education, as well as employer unions such as FKE, that's the Federation of Kenya Employers, National Gender and Equality Commission, pro bono lawyers and advocates. These are people we are hoping will come on this table as we start the campaign. Some of them have already joined, as you can see, we already have 25 CSOs aboard, but some of these people are people we are hoping are also going to, to be part of us. The start date is today, November 2021, and we decided on the 16 days of activism, which is very important. And in order for a campaign to be effective, it also needs to have an end date. And we are hoping that this campaign will run in the course of three years, ending in October 2024. Of course, with a campaign, you need to develop a theory of change, which is something we all worked on. And for this to happen, what do we need to do? All of us, as we come together to do this campaign, we need to have close monitoring of SGPV and increase in public awareness. This, once you do this, what happens is evidence gathered will sensitize the public on the magnitude and impact of rape and defilement. Once the public is aware, what happens is the public starts noticing, Allah, this is happening here. And obviously there's going to be more sensitization, more reporting, isn't it? So with that, then of course people will start demanding for accountability. Why is this rapist still here? Why is this person still here? This person defiled children, but he hasn't been arrested. Of course, there will be a demand for increased accountability. And thus, we hope with increased accountability, we will of course have increased convictions of perpetrators of rape and defilement. And that is what formed our theory of change. Um, again, a campaign needs to be effective. So we need to make sure that we are facing this campaign in different ways. Uh, we make a baseline, we have a phase. Phase one will run between November 2021, that is starting today until October 2022. Then we come on board and see how many things we have accomplished, what are our achievements. Then we go to phase 1B, which is November 2022 until October 2023, ending the campaign with phase 1C, which will run from November 2023 to October 2024. Why are these important? It is for us to monitor, evaluate, report of any progress we have to see if we have further developed the plan for the next steps. Aye, the next steps look like this. What are we hoping to have achieved? As you can see, that is there. We have a launch, which we, have, we are having today. One time we were looking at this as a milestone we are set to achieve, but we already have done that. We have already done our launch. We are looking towards resource mobilization. For a campaign to be effective, we need money, we need funds. So also 2022, we look towards doing a lot of research and shaping the narrative, which is part of our campaign. Capacity building, and of course, very importantly, public interest litigation, which we hope will happen in 2023. 
and then we look at the evaluation. And as we are doing this, we also look at our mental health and wellness. Okay, so this is the important part. We may talk all those things, but we need to have a strategy, isn't it? We cannot just have a campaign that doesn't have a strategy. Very important strategy is within capacity and skill building, where we will involve things like training, benchmarking, so that our members can know what we are doing, why we are running this campaign. The other thing is shaping the public narrative. As I said earlier, once you do awareness creation, the public starts being aware and awareness, of course, is what is going to help us with our other campaign strategy, which is accountability. And within shaping the public narrative, we're looking at engaging the media. If the media is here, we need you to be part of this very important campaign. And of course, you're going to, be, to do skill building. In terms of accountability, we are looking at research and litigation. We are hoping that our campaign will be very visible. But in order for the campaign to be visible, we need you all of you to collaborate, come together and network. And then resource mobilization, that will involve fundraising. Of course, monetary, evalu monitoring, evaluation and learning. We'll have a midterm evaluation, continuous evaluation. We had a baseline before we started. And then an end time evaluation. Mental health and, and, and wellness, very important. Psychosocial support, self-care and obviously debriefing. So, again, to achieve the campaign, we need all these things that we have told you before. We need this campaign to have ownership. It is not a Nusikime campaign, it is not cruise, it needs to be owned by each and every member of us. And even the ones who are going to come across and to join us, we need to come together. And so that once we do this, then every person can obtain their role and their responsibility and we hope that we will be able to secure commitment to the campaign once we are done with this. We will, of course, establish the terms of engagement. We will have an MOE with all of us who are here, who are the stakeholders towards this, and to the new partners and to the other ones who are already here to induct us onto the campaign and to establish a coordination team, which we are doing. We are calling it a consortium. It's the Mulika Wabakaji Consortium. We will, of course, develop then a campaign budget. And can you imagine, there is nothing that works without money. Pesa in Iran dunia. So we need to fundraise for this campaign so that we can have a robust campaign. A campaign without money is a bus that will never leave. So, of course, we are hoping that we'll have a campaign concept. We will develop a proposal, identify, meet potential donors. You people who are carrying money bags, please, we need you here. We are also hoping that local people will also fund, help us fundraise and towards shaping the public narrative. We are hoping to have workshops, public barazas, in within your communities, dialogue. and with the media, again, workshop training, breakfast meetings, media briefing, all these things, op-eds, opinion ed opinion ads, media analysis. We are hoping to get feature stories and documentary as well as also have a robust campaign on social media. And then lastly, we are looking at initiating accountability. The state needs to, what does the state do? How active are they? Or are we looking at the inaction of the state towards SGBV? So in order for us to do that, we need to do a lot of continuous research. We cannot just go and say we are going to take the state to court and we do not have any research that backs up that information. Uh, we are going to be documenting cases of SGBV so that we can acknowledge how big is this problem? How big, what's the magnitude of this problem? And then with that, we will be able to develop a standard documenting template that all of us will be able to use so that we can use it towards the campaign. Uh, initiate strategic litigation. We'll be able to look at different cases and then identify the cases that will help us win the litigation identifies which lawyers we will work with, build defense, and then file the suit. And of course, we will monitor, document, and report SGBV violations and abuses. All these are things that we are, you know, we are setting aside for us to be able now, to be able to hold the state accountable for their inaction, 
or action on SGBV. Hopefully, we will get to engage human rights special mechanism, as we have said. We are hoping to invite the special rapporteur, hoping, and then, of course, we will partner with the special rapporteur if he gets to come to Kenya. I thought the, the rapporteur is invited by the government and partner with the special rapporteur on SGPV. Um, again, increased visibility on the issue of SGPV. One of the things we need to do is also to humanize the data, to make sure that when the people get it, it's palatable. So media strategy, social media campaign, which is going to be involved, very much involved on survivor-friendly reporting. We do not want reports of earlier, uh, you know, she was slashed to death and things like that. We want this reporting that the media is going to be undertaking to be very survivor friendly. Undertake a budget auditory on the SGPV response and identify and engage eminent personality who are going to be our campaign ambassadors. People who are out there, people who are known, people who when they stand, people listen. You know, people who, when you, eh, people who men will listen to, women will listen to, children will listen to, Eminent personalities. Notice we have not said influencers. We've said eminent personalities. So we are hoping these people, this will help us to generate facts on SGBV network, IEC materials, lobby and advocacy. Hopefully we will have a parliamentary committee on SGBV. Again, capacity and skill building. All of them are there. We, we know what that entails and how that looks like. And we'll also monitor, evaluate, and learn. Mental wellness, we've been through all of that. And with all that, what are our desired outcomes? Once we've done all these things, what are we really hoping to achieve as a campaign? We are hoping, one, is to raise awareness on sexual and gender-based violence. We have a very normalized attitude towards SGBV. You know, all of us here work within SGBV, and you know how the public perceives SGBV. So we want to raise awareness. And once we raise awareness, we are hoping to reduce the cases of SGBV, increased survivor reporting, improved response and referral mechanisms, and presentation of more watertight evidence. And then our second objective, which is the most important part, is to increase accountability for perpetrators of rape and defilement. Remember, our campaign runs around spotlighting the rapists. So we are hoping that we're going to have an increased accountability for the perpetrators of rape and defilement. Again, our desired outcome for this is to look at how does access to justice for survivors look like? Have they gotten trust in the judicial system? All right, we are also hoping that with that, once they, the public is, has already gotten to be aware, then we hopefully that now with increased awareness, we're going to see a reduction of cases. And of course, with a reduction of cases, we are hoping for an increased number of conviction and that of perpetrators that have been brought to justice. And our third objective is to shape the public narrative. Number one, demystify myths and misconception around SGBV. And importantly, reduce the stigma. And lastly, reduce the normalization. Very important. We need to have a reduced normalization of SGBV. And can you imagine if people would publicly, without shame, just start discussing and then say, Mama, so hey, this happened. We are going to the police. We are reporting. And if we don't know how to report, we can refer. These are very important outcomes. Now, what are the assumptions that we are looking at? Ah, these are our, this, the success of all of this. We can speak big, we can talk big, we can do presentations, we can do meetings, but the success of this project is based on the following. That all of us, as partners, we will put the resources required to achieve the activities I have mentioned as part of the project that when conducting these activities at community level, there will be no threat of physical harm to our members, security concern, or incidents to either our members, our guests, or even community members. We are also hoping that during the implementation, partner, organization, and stakeholders, all of us,
who may come together. Be very